All right, hi everyone. It's a new week. It is time for a new pattern. I'm going to scroll down to pattern focus to find the next pattern on our list of things to do. Uh, we just did that hex triangle grid, so we're going to do this one. Amphora. Have I done this one? I feel like I've done it, but maybe not on a video. It might just have been, you know, my own personal thing. Yeah. Oh, this is an interesting pattern. Um, it's shown in the sample. It's shown right... Oh, oh dropping things. <sighs> Dawn, stop dropping things. Okay. It's shown right here in the middle. Right there. Okay. So it's, um, it can be done in a ribbon, or you can do more than one together and make it more of a, I don't know, freeform kind of grid kind of thing. Anyway, we're going to start with some lines. And then on those lines, we're going to put in a diamond shape that's filled in dark. And then around every other one of the diamond shape lines, we're going to do this sort of lumpy aura, like that. But then skip that one, then do that one. And then on where this lump is, come out and make a spiral. Out and make a spiral. And on the other side. And that's it. Oh, no, it's not. And then there's this last step, which is to connect this spiral, to the, sort of the inside of this spiral right here, the outside of that spiral there with a like that. That's a cool shape. I like that shape. So I think I'm just going to just go for it and just do I don't know if I want to incorporate it into some other pattern. Not sure what I want to do yet. Find me a piece of paper. Turn on my light. Close your eyes, everyone. There we go. Zoom that in a little bit so you don't see all my tape. Okay. Um, let's start with just giving myself a little bit of a border. And then composition. What do I want to do? I think I'm going to um, try it in two different scales, maybe in larger and smaller. So let me let me kind of divide my tile sort of in a diagonal and sort of in half, but not really with this kind of a swoopy curvy line like that. And then we'll put, um, I don't want there, I want it more like that. Um, and then we'll put, I'll put, um, one on one side, one on the other, different, different, um, thicknesses. Okay, let's give this a go. I don't know which pen to use. I, I am, for some reason, my pens are all gone foobar on me. Well, I'm going to try this one. I'm going to keep working with this one until it's completely out of ink. And we'll see what happens. I am going to do a border. But I think I want to do sort of a round. I'm going to do something different than I normally do. I'm going to go around. And then I'm going to go around a couple of times. Oop. I've been doing this lately on my art, my regular drawing art. I really like that border, and this pen really is not doing well. Look at, can I zoom you in? That is not drawing properly. So this pen is no longer viable. In the trash it goes. Okay, let's try this one. We'll see what happens. I think I'm going to make my lines go this way.
I, I want this I want this line. I'm gonna I'm gonna need this line to actually be drawn. And this one's doing the same thing. I've got two pens that are not viable. What the heck? I wanted something to break up those spaces and it kind of goes with this. It's going to go like that. Like that. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to do this diamond shape. Where do I want it? I'm going to do it here. And then there. I could be more precise with where I'm sticking this shape, but you know what? I'm not. I'm just going to kind of do it loose. It's okay. You just kind of want them to line up sort of here. Notice that my diamonds kind of got bigger as I came down the down the rope here, but that's okay. However, it turns out is how it turns out. Another one about here. This pen is also not doing its best, but I think it'll be fine for this drawing. I may have to also give this one a to the to the bin okay and then this one you wouldn't see you'd see this one here Yeah, this is not working well. This pen may not make it to the end of this tile. I hate wasting ink though. Try to get as much of it out as I can. You can hold on to your older pens and use them for like um, shading. Use it for like, like here's a an example. If I can use this pen and it's not really drawing well, but I can make this sort of hatching shading out of it. See, look how poorly this is drawing. Um, you can use it. But I get them mixed up. I've tried saving my old pens and I get them mixed up as to what's a good pen and what's not a good pen. But this is already, I can't. Yeah. Sorry about the laughter in the background. My son is home. He's in his room next door. Apparently he is having an entertaining time chit-chatting with his friends online and he likes playing online games and sometimes they just have the best time. Okay, we're going to do something like that and then this pen has also had it. So we're going to move up to the 03 because I don't know if I have any more 01s left in here. Oh, I have an 02. That's better. It's not quite as big as an 03. 
This one I probably have lots of ink in it because I don't usually draw with an O2. Okay, so on one of these we're going to just kind of go, oh that's a much better drawing pen. Pens are much better when they actually have ink in them, huh? I'm going to make that sort of shape and then skip this one, although I may come in here and color in those diamonds a little better. That coloring in was just pitiful. Make those a little bit nicer. Maybe you can't see that, but I can. Okay. So then, kind of out and up and up. Something like that. And you're not going to see that, but I want to fix this diamond. It looks bad. Okay, and then this one is going to come from here and over and like that. And the same with this. really won't see much of that. Okay, then on this side, coming on this upward curve of these guys, there's a spiral. Like that. And then going this way, there's the same spiral going the other direction. Yeah, and then next step, my phone turned off on me, I took too long. Okay, uh, from the inside, let me zoom in so I can really see what I'm supposed to be doing. From kind of the inside of here to the outside of here, kind of like that. Okay, so from the inside of there to the outside, inside to outside, inside to outside. I really like that curve that it makes. So then we're going to do that over here. Outside, inside, outside, like that. I do like that shape. I might use this this outer shape on something else. I really like that shape. So this one will be like that. And this one, you'll see parts of that, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. That's pretty cool. And now I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do it the other way. And I'm going to do it at a different scale. Maybe smaller. Smaller? 
or maybe wider so I can make my my spirals wider I'm going to do it at a, the closer triangles but at a wider wider spacing something like that because this I had one two three four five six seven one two three four so they're wider but I think I want the triangles smaller and closer together That looks different scale looks different so here you wouldn't see it so you would see this one like that like that okay so now I get to start doing some questions my YouTube questions from viewers this was the most requested question I got it from Jim Blackwell Steve Murray Peggy McThompson and Lee Rigour what other forms of media do you practice I do all sorts of different art um, lately, I've been doing, I've been doing the 29 faces challenge. Um, so far I've done like, I don't know, two, four, six, eight, ten or so faces. I'm working on them. Um, some look amazingly like the person I'm trying to draw. Others look nothing like the person I'm trying to draw. So, you know, I have that issue going on. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm enjoying myself. I'm having fun drawing faces. And they didn't, the 29 Faces Challenge didn't mean that they had to resemble any one person. But I'm doing that for myself to try to practice because I don't usually do faces. So I've been doing that. Um... I have, I do mixed media in, in the mixed media journals, lots of collage, paint, that sort of thing. Um, I do hobby kind of crafts. Um, right now I'm working on fixing a metallic peacock sculpture thing that I got as a garden art item that is just got itself some issues. So I'm working on repainting that. I like to paint. I, I do um, some of Cinnamon Cooney tutorials and others. Mostly they've been cinnamons, but I can be inspired by all sorts of things. I like photography. Um, I have done fabric crafts of one type or another. I've done cross stitching. Um, I've done batik work. I just, you know, I've done a variety of things. I used to, to really flit from um, project to project, a lot of unfinished things. Um, until I found uh, patterns. For some reason, patterns are sticking. I, I've been doing them now for quite some time, and it's the only art form that has really stuck that I've continued to do consistently. And who knows, you know, one day I may 
just give up the ghost but right now really enjoying it So that was the question that had the most people ask that question. Next, then these are in no particular order. They're just kind of however they came in um, as they were being asked. I, you know, at the end of every day, I would retype the few that came in at each day. And um, yeah, so they're in no particular order. What brand of colored pencils do you love to use? Judy Brown wants to know that. Um, I prefer the Prismacolor, Prismacolor Premier. I have not tried any of the, um, what's the other brand that everybody really loves? Uh, gee. I don't have Derwent regular color pencils. I have Derwent watercolor pencils. Those are really good. Um... I have ink tents and those are different. Those are not regular standard watercolor, I mean colored pencils, so I don't really count them as colored pencils. I want to do something else here. Um, but yeah, Pr Prismacolor premieres are the ones that that I have. I suppose if I had a different set, I would use a different set, but that's that's what I've got. Um, I want I want some straight lines in here. I want I think I'm going to do this. Sorry, got kind of quiet. Okay. Uh, Shruti Gorpat wants to know what is your best time of day and why? That's a good question. Um, I'm not a morning person. You guys might know that from if you watch regularly mornings and I do not get along um, now that I've been off work and I've had haven't had any appointments or anything because I don't have to leave the house because I'm supposed to be sitting with my foot up um, I I want to do want to do that I'm just kind of um, letting my my natural body clock sort of rule my world um i've been going to bed i have a hard time going to sleep that i've always have it's been it's been something that happens my whole life so um you know people have suggested various things i have tried them all it's just the way i'm wired it just is um, the only thing that really works is to take a pill. I don't want to take a pill. Uh, yes, I've tried meditation. Yes, I've tried sound therapy. Yes, I've tried warm milk, etc., etc., etc. I have tried them all. And some of them work for one or two times and then they and then they don't. So, um Anyway, I've just let my, my natural body clock do its thing. And so I go to bed about 10, sometimes earlier, sometimes 9.30. Um, and I usually fall asleep around 11. 
maybe 12. Um, and then I've been waking up somewhere between 7 and 8, depending on how well I slept. And that's been pretty good. You know, it's it's consistent. It's close to 8 hours, 7 or 8 hours sleep most nights, sometimes 9. Um, but for the most part, it's 7 or 8 hours. And that's that's been working really good for me. So, um, but if you try to get me up early, you, you get me... You try to get me going at 6 a.m. and I am not the happy camper and you get me much earlier than 6 a.m. and like my son he leaves for work at 5 o'clock in the morning or gets up at 4 30 and leaves like 5 15 or 5 30 something like that I don't know I'm not awake then I have no idea what his schedule is but oh you could not get me to do that on a regular basis the, there was a couple of weeks prior to my um, my broken toe that um, I really like that that I um, was consistently having to be at work at at 8 a.m. which meant I had to be ready to leave by 7:30. Um, And I, that was a struggle because to be ready to be, to leave by 7.30 would meant I had to be up no later than 6.30, 6 o'clock better. And I just, the earlier I get up, the slower I am. Um, my best time of day where I'm most productive is, is somewhere between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. I am the most productive right in that window get after 4 p.m. and I get all sluggish again I don't know I seem to be lately falling asleep even even though I've had a good night's sleep I seem to be falling asleep right around 4 4 30 and taking about a 30 minute nap don't ask me what that's about anyway uh, I'm trying to decide how I want to shade this I want to do this. I want this ribbon on top of everything else that I did. I don't want, I want that. A little overdid with my pencil there. Let's try again. There. So that's my best time of day. Um, when I was working nights, I was fine with, you know, staying up later, getting up a little bit later in the morning and, um, you know, not starting my work day until two in the afternoon and, and working till 10, 1030 at night. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, but I'm most productive if, if you, if they give me the the middle shift where I come to work at 10 or 11 and go home at like 6, I am the most productive then. I get a lot done. I'm trying to decide how I want to shade this. I want to do this. People ask me how do I decide what I'm going to shade and sometimes I'm not sure what I want to shade but then I just I don't know I just pick something and then I go for it through that the whole pattern you'll see that I didn't go on both sides I could have gone on both sides I could have gone on this side on this outside of both of these shapes but I didn't I went on this side of this one and then on this side of this shape um, I'm not too sure why, 
but it works. Uh, this needs to be cleaned off. If you have your blending stump and it needs to be cleaned off, use a piece of emery board or a piece of sandpaper and just kind of turn it and scrape and that will clean it off, give you a fresh, fresh tip, make it easy for you to continue to blend. I don't know what happened to my tape, but the end of this blending stump has about had it and I need some more tape. I've squashed this blending stump again. I'm really hard on my thin blending stumps, but I prefer them over the tortillons, so, and they're cheap. Maybe next time I'm at Michael's, I'll pick myself up a new package or I have to buy some stuff on Amazon. So maybe I'll just add that to my order. A lot of times on Amazon, there's cheap supplies, whether they're art supplies or other that are super cheap, but you have to do them as an add on item. Add on item. I keep some of those on like a wish list on my Amazon so I can find them easy. Um, anytime I need to add, you know, just a, a couple of bucks to make it so that I get a free shipping, I add these little things on. Blending stumps is one of those items. It doesn't cost much, but you can, something that I will always use. What do we think? I like that. I feel like I feel like I want I got a little carried away there. I feel like I want down here like this. the whole thing just just under the little scroll see what that does I need a little white. I like these tone tiles. I need a little white. Oh, you know what? That's the other thing I need to order. Well, I should be making myself an Amazon list while I am working here. My white pencil is getting small. See? It's getting there. I want one of those um, pencil extender with the, the little grip thing where you put that like a stubby bit of pencil in there. So you have something to hang on to so you don't waste your pencil. You can go all the way down to as low as you can get into the pencil sharpener. I want one of those and, um, and I want to buy another just white pencil. You, luckily, the nice thing about the Prismacolors is that you can buy open stock, um, which means that, uh, that you can purchase just one color. You don't have to buy a whole set to get one color that you need. That's the par part of the problem I see in certain sets is um, if you really like the set, you can't buy just a single thing. It happens in markers too. Like you can't buy just a single marker if the marker only comes in a set that they don't sell singles. And that's really annoying. Because sometimes you just want the one color. How's that look? I like that. I like that look. Okay. 
And then I think I want just a little bit around those ones. Like that. My toe itches all of a sudden. Holy guacamole. Oh my goodness. Does that mean it's healing? You guys, I've noticed that lately, the last day or two, that, that my toe is starting to itch. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that's a good sign. Because I can't go down there and scratch it. But it's driving me nuts. So i got to do things to distract myself from the, from the itch. But all of a sudden, it just went whoosh, like a like a zapper. Whoo! I feel that. That's crazy. That's a weird feeling. Okay. It's a little distracting, I must say. Okay. I like that. That came out good. See, it can go either direction. It doesn't have to go down. It can go sideways. And you can embellish with all sorts of things. Is it done? It's not done. It's telling me it's not done. I hate it when... No, I don't hate it. But it's kind of annoying sometimes when it tells me it's not finished. It wants a... It wants dark right there. The end of each of these little... spirals. I don't know why, but it does. Listen to that intuition you have, because it's usually right. Not always. Sometimes it goes horribly wrong, but most of the time it's like, oh yeah, that's the... See, it just needed that little something. That's amazing how just that little something just balanced the darks and the lights. I think I had too much dark here and not enough dark up here. That's what it is about composition. It's less about the pattern that you choose and more about how you um, balance your shapes and your lights and darks. I think that is more important than the pattern itself. Um, Ina is working on that. She's working on a, um, a CPT coach lesson that um, is working on composition. And I'm assuming she's going to talk about the balance between lights and darks and, um, and shapes and, and contours and straights and, and flowing. You know, it, it really, uh, how you can compose your, your tile. Um, I'm, I'm really interested, but I don't have time to, um, it's going to be like a 10 week course for the, um, CPT coaches. Um, and I, I just don't have another thing in me right now. Uh, but maybe when she uh, comes out with, she's going to come out with a book and that will be really good. So hopefully Everybody will have the opportunity to purchase the book and not just coaches. I don't know. I don't know what her plan is. But she's working on it. And I'm excited to see what kinds of things she comes up with. Because explaining composition to me is very difficult. Especially in abstract art. Um, it just is. You know, you, you got your rule of thirds and your other things. But... but uh, I don't know. Seems to me that, that, that there are some things in composition that would be difficult to explain uh, concisely. And I'm looking forward to seeing what she comes up with so that it's easier for me to explain to you guys um, 
about composition. So anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. This was fun and um, I'll do some more questions tomorrow. Bye. Have a great day. Do something nice for someone. All right. Bye-bye.